my point yeah. is stop lying on God. I'm not saying that the spirit doesn't move. He does move. But do you know how he wants to see how, how we ought to see the spirit moving people by you going to your neighbor and helping him by you going to someone and sharing the gospel with them, by you praying for someone, by you being a godly light. So God is not looking for him to show us miracles. He's looking for us to show up, show him and others his love. I don't believe that the miracles and all of that stuff has ceased, but I do believe that a lot of the foolishness that we do see in churches where people, you know, got their heads on the forehead and flipping up and down the aisles and all of that stuff. I do believe that that stuff is, you know, is not of God and it's not the spirit moving. Mm -hmm. But there are some people who still would consider a person who holds my position and yours as a continuationist. So how would you kind of, explain that position to where we believe that God can still use people. Um, but we're kind of skeptical of some of the stuff that we do see in churches. How or do I... you believe that a person can well, I think you, you said it the other night, spoiler alert, but, <laughs> but how would you explain that a person, um, you know, who does believe that a person can speak in tongues and still, you know, miraculously heal a person, you know, by the workings of the Holy spirit. I, I tell them, and I don't, I, if I'm talking to someone who doesn't know me, who hadn't, who's not familiar with me on the channel, uh, or just in general, I just tell them, yeah, God can move. I, I, I agree with that. I, I absolutely believe, believe that, uh, without even a but. And then I'll ask him, uh, and don't you think that when he does move, everyone will know it? It'll be obvious. And they're, they're going to say, yes. What, what charismatic or what continuation is going to say that when he moves, it's not obvious. And then we look at the Bible every time he moves. And I mean, every time he moves, he, God is not a secret agent uh, um, power. He doesn't just do stuff. Let me just do this. And no one knows. Now there's a lot of things that he does that no one knows about, or we don't pay attention. We take for granted, such as keeping this dog on globe spinning and keeping the sun hot and keeping gravitation right where it's supposed to be. The, he does those things we take for granted, but there's other things that he does that, he does that we don't think about uh, that. We don't even realize like for, for example, uh, I know for a fact, I'm not a prophet, but I know for a fact, God kept any and everybody that wanted to kill Alton at bay last night. How do I know? Because exhibit A, you're right there. And so we we don't think about that, that maybe someone had designs on us and the devil does. He desires to sip all of us. He desires to destroy all of us. And so I would say, so let's just make sure we don't misrepresent God. Meaning if someone comes and pretends to be our father, and they show him as a clown or as a buffoon. We're not, we're not going to accept that. We're not going to accept someone misrepresenting our own family member, father or mother, or, our own, or us or our children and so forth. And so we're not going to accept someone misrepresenting God as well. When he shows up, we don't have to worry. And this, this is why I say the whole cessationist continuation argument is really not a, not a, it's kind of a moot point because for those right. who are continuationists, you don't have to worry about cessationists not believing in the move of the spirit, if that's what you think, because they do though, but you don't have to worry about that because when he does move, everyone knows it. You don't have to worry about cessationists thinking that they can't speak in tongues or thinking about they, there is no gift of healing. There's no prophet. You don't have to worry about that because every time it happened, it happened at the, at the behest of the spirit, not the person. The person didn't conjure that up. The spirit moved upon them. The first folks speaking, speaking tongues in the Bible. They didn't know they were going to speak in. Matter of fact, every time someone spoke in tongues in the Bible that we see, an actual biblical account, they didn't know ahead of time. They didn't say, Lord, give us this ability to speak in these languages. They that that never they just happened. That is as right. the spirit move. When someone was healed, that is as the spirit move. They didn't decide, I want to heal. If that were the case, then Paul would never say, Tell someone, tell Timothy, <laughs> take take a little uh alcohol, get, get, get you a little wine for your for your stomach, or Trophimus is still sick. That wouldn't be the case because they know it's the move of the spirit is not on command. So we don't have to worry about if you're, if you're a continuationist, you don't have to worry about someone actually uh, stopping the Holy spirit. When the Holy spirit moves, he moves irrespective of what you want to do. So if the, if tongues are legitimate, the tongues that we see when the Lord, if the Lord moves on me, then I'll speak them. I will speak in tongues when the Lord moves, you will too. But if you want to go do it in tongues, that is not biblical. There's nowhere in, in the Bible where someone speaks in tongues on command. Let's let's pray in the spirit. You're a liar and you're ignorant of the scriptures. 
uh, laying your hands on someone, that was never on command either. If the spirit moves, he moves irrespective of you. Do you think you and, my, and me have the ability to stop the spirit if he moves? If the Lord wants to use Alton's hands to bring someone back to life, and Alton's kind of, I don't know, but no, I guess what Alton's going to do. If the spirit comes upon him, Alton's hands, bam, he's alive or he's healed. Whether I think it or not, whether I feel like it or not, that's not the case. And so, so cessations don't have to worry about what continuations believe. Continuation, I'm sorry, continuations don't have to worry about cessations believe. So since the charismatic movement is growing, then that means that God is doing something and God is working. So therefore we shouldn't, you know, be questioning the move of the spirit and and all of that stuff so so how do you how do you address those claims that well this must be of god because it's moving and people are starting to accept and start to accept jesus now and it's only majority through the charismatic it's literally the dumbest argument that you can make really so because it's large and growing that means that it, it must be the lord as though all of these warnings that we have about people about false prophets and about people in mass being led astray. That's not so if 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 this because the charismatic movement is growing, well tell me, apply what God is saying. Apply this passage, these passages speak about how people will not endure sound doctrine. Where does that come from? So touting numbers is a silly thing. We, again, few are they that find it. These these are Jesus' words. So if if when Jesus says that there will be few, irrespective of whether they're charismatic or not, continuations or cessationists or biblical continuations, doesn't matter. There's only going to be a few. But the majority of people that want to call themselves Christians are going to hell. And so the mere fact that you've got a large number and it's growing, well, think about this. If it was so much, think about it, if, if, if charismatic, um, if, if the whole notion is this is an outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon people, the Lord is moving through his spirit upon people on the earth. That's a lot of folks that are saved. And if that's the case, well, then shouldn't the world be affected? Because even the detractors of Christianity early on said that these people, these apostles, these Christians, they are what? Turning the world upside down. That was then. There's more Christians now. And so if the Holy Spirit is even in in, in, in greater usage and the power is greater now or just like it was then, then shouldn't we see the world still turned upside down? But we don't see that. Now, I'm not I'm not blaming charismatics on this. I, I want you all to hear me. I'm not blaming charismatics on this. But I was using this to prove a point. If if the charismatic movement is so powerful. And even in America. Or Africa or Asia or Europe. Two things I want to ask them. Why, why is the place that the places that you see the least amount of charismatics are the places where there's the most persecution? In other words, in northern Nigeria, oh. you don't have a whole lot of charismatics. Now, in the, in the central and southern, southern oh. part of Nigeria, you do. You don't see a whole lot of charismatics in North Korea or in China. You know why? They don't have, have time for that. So if it's going to be true, it better be true. But more to the point, though, right. what we have seen in the world is an increase in lawlessness, like the Bible said. What we see is the love of many waxing cold. We see more crime, more debauchery. Wait a second. How is the presence of the Holy Spirit so great, so thick, so powerful, but it's not affecting society? We got a problem then. So my point yeah. is stop lying on God. I'm not saying that the Spirit didn't move. He does move. But do you know how he wants to see, how, how we ought to see the Spirit moving people? By you going to your neighbor and helping him. By you going to someone and sharing the gospel with them. By you praying for someone. By you being a godly light. That's why he said, let your light so shine that men will see your good work and then glorify God. Not by you, homina, 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 and this and that and falling out. That is not how it's done. It's by your actions in your, by, through your heart happening. People see your light shining by what you do. Hey, can you pray for me? No, I'll do you one better. I'll pray with you by you showing love for them. The love of God compels us to do these things and also the terror and the fear of him. And so God has never been interested in seeing, God is not impressed by himself. But I'm sorry, not by, God is not impressed by his own miracles. That's what it, that God's miracles, you know what that is for him? A regular day. So God is not looking for him to show us miracles. He's looking for us to show 
uh, show him and others his love, to show the power of him in us. How in spite of what we're going through, let me tell you what, what, let me tell you what the Holy Spirit true power looks like. And some of y'all might want to go ahead and, and take a pen and write this down. True power, the Holy Spirit really looking like something in someone's body, in someone's life, is when you're going through something and you still keep your peace. You're going through something and you still keep your joy. You're going through something and you're still talking about the goodness of the Lord. The power of Paul is not his, his uh, power. Not, not the, the Lord working through him, but the power of Paul is what he said while he's going through. Paul's writing these letters while he's going through something in, in, in prison. Paul's writing this stuff even while he's being persecuted. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. And if your Holy Spirit doesn't cause you to show joy, irrespective of your situation, I submit to you, you might want to check your Holy Spirit. You might want to lift the hood up, look in there and see, examine yourself to see if you actually have Christ. Because your Christ seems to be dependent upon things seem to be dependent upon signs like a wicked and adulterous generation looks for. That's what seems to be your Holy Spirit. If your Holy Spirit doesn't keep you calm when your world is crashing, check your Holy Spirit. If your Holy Spirit can't keep your mouth at bay when folks are talking and yammering at you, you might want to check your Holy Spirit. If your Holy Spirit doesn't hold your fish, your feet, your hands, and your mouth back when other things are coming at you, you might want to check your Holy Spirit. I submit to you that you are either not a Christian with no Holy Spirit or a very weak one. And if that's the case, sit back, relax, and watch the others that are filled with the Spirit do the job of a true believer. That is to live out the gospel in word and deed. Amen. Loud.